right, so what's going on, guys? Um, the Video Game Awards. Uh, <clears throat> all the uh, nominees for all the different categories got announced the other day. Um, I always get pretty excited to watch those every year. So I figured, um, why not give you my opinions on all the different nominees for all the different awards? So let's check that out. Alright, so for Game of the Year, we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Players Unknown Battlegrounds, Persona 5, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, out of those five, I own four of them. Uh, I probably have easily two or three hundred hours in PUBG. I have not beaten Horizon Zero Dawn yet, as I'm waiting to play the, what is it, the Frozen Wilds, I believe it's called, uh, and I'm waiting for the compilation disc for that. Uh, Mario is definitely good, as well as Zelda. However, I'm more of a fan of the older classic Marios and classic Zeldas. I like going from dungeon to dungeon. It's what I've done for 20 years. That's the way I want my Zelda games. I'm cool with the huge open world, but I wanted dungeons. I got the, uh, what, what were the be whatever the beasts were called. I mean, they're cool, but they weren't even like... You could beat those in like 20 minutes or less. And I mean, they weren't real dungeons, but whatever. Getting off topic. Mario, good game as well. I miss actual power-ups. Um, good game though, but whatever. So between all those, I haven't played Persona 5 yet. That's probably a game I'll get relatively cheap one day. Uh, it does look good though. Uh, between all those, I would probably have to say that my game of the year this year would probably... I'm going to honestly have to say PUBG. Uh, and it is a multiplayer only game, but um, I've just had an unlimited amount of fun with that game. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Uh, it is coming out for the Xbox here shortly, so I do highly recommend picking that up on that or on the PC. You can run that game on a potato, so uh, pretty much anybody can play that game. Alright, so next we got Best Game Direction. Awarded to a, stu a game studio or outstanding creative vision and innovation in a game direction and design. Um, all right, so you got Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. You got Resident Evil 7, uh, or Biohazard, which is Resident Evil in Japan is what they call it. Legend of Zelda again, Mario again, and Horizon Zero Dawn again. Uh, so for me, when I think of game direction, that would mean the direction that you've taken a franchise. Um, so I have, I do not have Wolfenstein 2 yet. I'm waiting for a Black Friday deal on that. Uh, it's 30, it's $25 at Best Buy on Black Friday. And I don't know if you can stack GCU on that, but I'm hoping you can because then it would be like $18 for a game that came out two weeks ago. Um, or not even, yeah, I think about two weeks ago. Uh, have not played Resident Evil 7 yet because I'm waiting for the Game of the Year edition and I want to play that in VR, uh, which I don't have yet either. Um, Zelda Breath of the Wild, pretty pretty drastic change in game direction, and same thing with Mario. And this is kind of a weird thing to me. Horizon is a, you know, its first game in the in the franchise. Hopefully they make it a franchise. It's you know, it's it's it is one of one of my favorite games of this year, but to me that's excluded from this category already. Uh, Mario and Zelda, to me, they they were good jumps, but in in the direction of the game, but I just it just wasn't for me. Uh, I haven't played Resident Evil Seven yet, and as far as Wolfenstein goes, I mean, I'm, it's a badass game, I'm sure. I loved the first two, um, being the Old Blood and New Order. Um, so technically this is kind of the third game, but whatever. Um, so I'm probably have to go ahead and say Resident Evil 7 did the biggest game-changing direction by turning it into first-person, making it into a full-fledged first-person game and or first-person VR game. I think that is the biggest leap in the gaming direction. I mean, Zelda, all they did was make the map bigger and change the dungeons into walking creatures. Instead of having eight of them, traditionally they had four, and they weren't that good. Just my opinion. I do like the game, but again, my opinion. Don't kill me in the comments, fanboys. And Mario, 
haven't finished it yet. I'm, pr I'm uh, I'd say I'm 70, 80, 85 percent done. So pretty close to being done. I have, I don't know, 200 moons, give or take. I haven't fought Bowser yet because I just don't want to. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and give that to Resident Evil 7. Best narrative. We got what remains of Edith Fitch. Actually, uh, Mr. Venegas was just telling me about this the other day in a live stream, which I looked into it. It does look pretty cool. I don't know anything about that game, so can't really judge that one because I don't know anything about it. Uh, Near Automata, fantastic game. CM Retro is actually doing a Let's Play of that on his channel, uh, live stream wise. Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice. Whew. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Wolfenstein 2: The New Colossus, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, so, best narrative for outstanding storytelling, narrative development, and a game. I'm gonna have to give that to Hellblade, hands down. There's no competition. If you haven't played Hellblade on your PC or your PS4, it's a must-buy this holiday. Uh, that uh, Ninja Theory is probably one of my favorite developers. They deserve way more praise than they get. Um, all their games are good. That's all I'm going to say about that category. Best Art Direction, Destiny 2. It's the same art direction they went with Destiny 1. I'm good. Cuphead. Awesome art direction. I mean, the game is literally a work of art. It's hand-drawn and painted, and it's a work of art. Legend of Zelda, it's pretty much the same art style as um, Skyward Sword, in my opinion. It's basically the exact same art style. Persona 5, haven't played it. Horizon Zero Dawn, it's just a, a hyper-realistic looking graphics. So obviously, Best Art Direction clearly belongs to Cuphead. If they don't win this award, that's just pathetic. Right? Uh, best Score Slash Music. Alright, you got Destiny 2. It's basically more or less Halo in space music. Um, then you got Cuphead. I gotta be honest, the music isn't that catchy. Near Automata, probably the contender for the, this category. Legend of Zelda, didn't really enjoy the music in that one that much. Mario, doesn't really have any catchy tunes. And Persona 5, I haven't really, I don't know anything about it except that I want to get it one day. Near Automata, I've played it. There's a reason Near Automata's theme is my PS4 theme on my PS4, because that music is that good. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go look up the soundtrack for it right now. I'll wait. It's that good. They win this award, hopefully. All right, best audio design. So what does this entail? Recognizing the best in-game audio and sound design. This is an easy pick for me. You got Destiny, Hellblade, Resident Evil 7, Zelda, Mario. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so with Hellblade, they essentially... When you pop in the game, or start it up, because it's digital only, unfortunately, it asks you to put headphones on, and it tells you that's the best way to experience a game, and it is. It has, like, perfect 3D surround. If, you, if you're familiar with Dolby Atmos yet, it's, it's like that, basically, in the game, and it's just wonderful. Like, you hear, she's basically like a schizophrenic going through this, like, Viking mythology lore and I don't really know how to explain it very well I'm not going to explain it very well but it is a fantastic game but the audio in that game like it just entrances you to play that game it's so good I cannot speak highly enough of that game um, so obviously that wins best audio design I mean Bungie you're doing the same thing you did with Halo all that all the time so I mean your music's always the same Resident Evil 7 haven't played it yet I'm sure it's just eerie scary music Zelda and Mario, to me, these games are good, but they're just not as, I don't know, they're just not as good as I wanted them to be. I mean, I, it's weird. Nintendo fanboys will complain about that they want new directions for the games, and I, and I kind of always have wanted new directions, but at the same time, I've been saying for years that I just want Mario Sunshine 2. You know, a boy can dream, like, that's what I want. And then as far as Zelda goes... I think they made the map too goddamn big. It just it pissed me off. All right, best performance. So awarded to an individual for voice over acting, motion, and or performance capture. Okay. So you got Melina Jorgens. I'm probably going to mess up some of these names. So that's Senua in Hellblade. Uh, Laura Bailey, which is Natty. 
Oh, Nadine Rose in uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. Then you got Claudia Black, who's Chloe in Uncharted Lost Legacy. And then you got Brian Bloom, who is BJ Blazkowicz from Wolfenstein 2 and 1 and pre whatever it's called. And then you've got um, Ashley Birch from Aloy, or Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, again, I haven't. I actually have not played Uncharted: The Lost Legacy yet because I'm waiting to get that at a sweeter price of like 15 bucks. Um, I have not played Wolfenstein 2 yet, but obviously Brian Bloom played the previous two games and he did a fantastic job. And Aloy is actually, I don't know if Ashley Birch did the motion capture, I would I would think maybe, but I know she obviously did the voice acting, but um, for me, it goes to Melina Jurgens. Uh, Hellblade is just, to me, should have been contender for game of the year. Um, it just broke so many things with gaming, it just, it, it it's... It's to me, it is a masterpiece of a game. Um, it's not, it's not terribly long of a game, and the combat is is difficult to get into, but easy to learn if that makes sense. And just, it's just such a good game. I can't recommend it enough. All right, games for impact. Uh, please knock on my door. I don't know a damn thing about that. Night in the woods. Don't know a damn thing about that. Life is strange before the storm. This is the prequel to the original Life is Strange. Then you've got Bury Me, My Love. Don't know a damn thing about that. What Remains of Edith Fitch. Again, my boy Mr. Venegas told me about it, but I don't know a damn thing about it, except for it, it looks good. The graphics look fantastic. And then Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice. Um, so I played episode one of the original Life is Strange because it was free on PSN, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so. I don't remember. Um, it was, it's, 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 if you're into like point and click kind of story games, it's actually not a bad game. Um, it's not terrible. It has a, you know, they invest, I think oh, it's Square Enix. They invested some time into that story and it's a decent story. But again, uh, I'm probably going to have to give this to Hellblade for its impact on the industry because it, it I think they released it right before National uh, Mental Health Day or Mental Awareness Day or whatever, and then on that actual day, they donated all of the money that you paid for that game to, you know, mental health issues. And I, I personally, I don't know anybody that's really affected by that, but I think it's a bigger problem in our country and in the world than people make it out to be. So I actually bought the game a second time at full price just so that my money would go to help that because also the developer just deserves... Ninja Theory just deserves everything that we can give them. I mean, that's the kind of, those are the kind of experiences that I want to get, new experiences from gaming. And I mean, yeah, I'm dogging on Mario and Zelda for changing it up too much, but I mean, those are already 30-year-old established franchises. I want those to stay the same, but then I also want newer franchises. Like, in my opinion, I think that they should have made Zelda Breath of the Wild maybe something along the lines with, like, a Kid Icarus, but, you know, basically just replaced Link with Kid Icarus, or Pit, rather, and um, kept Zelda the way it was, but, you know, I'm, I'm probably just pissing off hella Nintendo fanboys right now, but I've been pretty dedicated Nintendo fan, so I can say what I want. Uh, but again, for Games for Impact, uh, I'm going to have to give Hellblade this one, but uh, probably Life is Strange is a, a close second on that one. All right, best ongoing game. This was another weird category. I looked at all these pretty you know, pretty well before I decided to shoot the video. Uh, so we got Warframe. That's came out, what, 2012, 2013? So that's a pretty old franchise, or pretty old game at this point in time. Rainbow Six Siege. I think that's on its third year, maybe. So not terribly old, but getting there. Uh, Overwatch, I think, is only about a year, maybe a year and a half. So really not that old. Grand Theft Auto Online uh, came out in 2013. Or maybe 2014, or I don't remember when that came out, but that's came out last gen, so it's pretty old. Uh, Destiny 5, or <laughs> Destiny 2, um, that uh, isn't really an ongoing thing because it just came out on September 6th this year. So I don't really understand how that's an ongoing thing. You don't get to keep any of your stuff from the original game. 
nor do you get to play any of this content from the original game, so immediately that one's axed off here for me. And if that one wins, that clearly means, just like our elect election system, uh, it's rigged. But uh, And then you got PUBG. That came out um, sometime this year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Early this year, I think. So not really an old franchise. Um, I've tried Warframe, and I didn't really like it. I've tried Rainbow Six, and I, I like it kind of, but I liked it more when it was a single-player game, and then you could play co-op and then hop on the multiplayer. But that's just me. Uh, I don't know if anybody else remembers this, but Rainbow Six Patriots, when they announced that for last gen, oh boy, was I excited to play that. And then they axed it to give us Rainbow Six Siege. Overwatch, not really too big of a fan of these arena-style jumping shooting games. Uh, Unreal did it best, and that game is, is dead. Even though they're making a new one, Unreal is, is, is dead. Uh, GTA Online's probably going to have to take this one for me for best online going best online or ongoing game and be, meaning the online portions of them uh, GTA Online has put out tons of content they have been steady updating that game and and I think I don't even think you have to buy the content they just basically make you buy the shark cards to buy costumes and cars and this and that I could be wrong I don't know but I'm sure that's probably out of all six of these the one that is most worthy of it because I know Rockstar at least yeah, they're screwing you on the loot boxes and the microtransactions, but at least they're putting out free content, so you win some, you lose some. Best mobile game. Now, if any of you know, I don't really play mobile games. I think phone games are not real games. However, these first two in the category, I have played because I am a Nintendo fanboy, and I'll admit it, but I will also call them out when they do shit that I don't like. Um... At first, I was kind of wary of this whole mobile initiative, but after I saw the first couple of things that they were offering to us, I can get behind it. It's fun to play at the doctor's office or while you're waiting for a pizza or this or that. So we got Fire Emblem Hero Heroes, Super Mario Run, Old Man's Journey, never heard of that, uh, Monument Valley 2, never heard of that, and Hidden Folks, never heard of that either because I don't play mobile games. But, I'm going to have to go ahead and admit this, I actually played Fire Emblem Heroes probably a good 20 hours, and I actually kind of enjoyed it. It's not the full-fledged handheld version that you're used to getting, or, you know, there's some on the consoles too, but that franchise got big on the handhelds. But, um, I'm going to have to go ahead and give it to that. Super Mario Run is kind of bullshit, because I'm pretty sure you only get the first world free, and then you have to pay 10 bucks to get the rest. Sorry, Mario. You didn't win this time. All right, best handheld game. So, all right, so we got Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World. Then we got Monster Hunter Stories, Metroid Samus Returns, Ever Oasis, and Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. <coughs> all right, so for me, is it just me or all the all these are 3DS games? Because the Vita's dead with it Sony fanboys just got to rub that in a little bit I, I had such high hopes for the Vita but it, it died a slow and painful death people are having such a hard time dealing with the fact that the Vita is dead uh, it's been dead since like 2013 maybe er, late or early 2014 but whatever I do own two Vitas so again I don't want to hear it from you I tried to support that system I bought it on launch day um, all right so you uh, for these, Poochie and Yoshi, I would say that that's better played on the Wii U, but if you don't have a Wii U, then this is your best option to play it. It is a fantastic game. Monster Hunter Stories is actually a pretty good game. Uh, I played the demo a few times, and I watched a buddy play through most of it. Um, it's definitely different from the other Monster Hunter games a little bit. It's more, I guess, the term for it is chibi. <laughs> Or Kitty, I guess is... I don't know. Uh, and then you got Metroid Samus Return. That's my girl. Uh, Ever Oasis is actually a title that I do want to pick up and try out. And then Fire Emblem's Echoes, blah, 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 blah. Which is, so I have two of these titles. One, well, I have the third one on the Wii U. But it's the same game. Um, and I watched somebody play through most of Monster Hunter Stories. And Ever Oasis, I know, is a pretty good game, from what I've heard. So I'm going to have to go ahead and give this to... Believe it or not, even though Metroid is my 
one of my top two franchises, I'm going to have to give this to Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia um, over Metroid Samus Returns. And here's why. I don't think that they should have made that a 3DS game. I think that should have been a Switch launch title. I think they really screwed up on that. Um, they could have easily polished that game up and put it out on the Switch. Um, or they could have put it out on the Switch this holiday and then had a double Metroid holiday, but hey, whatever. Alright, you got best VR slash AR game. This is a little hard for me to judge because I've never actually played a VR game. You got Super Hot, you got Star Trek, Lone Echo, Echo Arena, Farpoint, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. So I've heard that Super Hot is actually a fun game. Star Trek I've heard is actually kind of a fun VR game. Uh, I've never heard of Lone Echo, and I've heard of Farpoint, and I actually do kind of want to try that. It's more of just like a shooter, like you walk down corridors and shoot aliens. At least that's what it looks like to me, uh, except for in virtual reality. And then you got Resident Evil 7. Um, I already know that that game's good because I played it twice, the demo, on my PC. And then I played it once again on my PS4 to, to just check out the graphics and how, how much worse they were and this and that. And they're really not that much different. Um, and I ran the demo on Ultra, so... Yeah, uh, but Resident Evil 7 is probably going to have to be the best VR game because I'm buying a PSVR this Christmas at some point after the Game of the Year edition of this comes out to specifically play it in VR. So it's the game that sold me on VR, and I don't even have one yet. All right, best action game. How long is this video already? 22 minutes, whatever. Don't really care. It's my channel. Don't care. Best action game. You got Prey, Noi, Destiny 2. Cuphead, and Wolfenstein. So out of these games, I do not own Prey. I do not own Noi. I do own Destiny 2 and have beat it. I do own Cuphead, and I'm about... I think I'm in the second world, and I think there's four worlds. So I'm not terribly far in it. That game is very difficult. Insanely difficult. But it is such, such a sweet satisfaction when you beat a boss. I really do love that game, but it is, in my opinion, it's a little too difficult, but it is very good. And then Wolfenstein 2, I'm very excited to get that, but I just, I didn't want to pay 60 bucks for a single player campaign that's like 8, eight to 12 hours long, somewhere in that ballpark. I know it's a great game. It's it's probably going to be a 10 out of 10 to me. I, I loved the first two, but I waited for those to be on sale on my PC, and I got them for 20 bucks on my PS4. And that's just kind of how I do first person shooters. Um,. I do still buy them new so that Bethesda gets the money, but I'm waiting till they're on sale. And I do actually want to get Prey as well. I played the demo. It's pretty cool. However, I'm a fan of the original game. I was very, very hyped for Prey 2. For any of my younger viewers that don't remember the Prey 2 trailer, the original Prey 2, made by the same developer before Bethesda and Arcane got their hands on it, uh, it was a very different game. You were like a bounty hunter in space, and you were going to travel from planet to planet, and it, it was going to be an awesome game. So basically, they rebooted the franchise with this. I don't think it really needed rebooting. Um, Prey 2, as it, as it was, would have been a better game, and I think it probably would have sold better than this one. So I'm going to have to say no for that. Noi, on the other hand, just came out on PC with a complete edition. The only way to get the complete edition is through downloading it on the PSN. That's kind of some bullshit. I want I want that game because it's made by Team Ninja, and they're you know they make Dead or Alive, Ninja Guide, and all that good stuff. I want to give this a shot. I like that developer. I want to support them, but I want the complete edition. Destiny 2. I honestly only really got that because I wanted that sexy white PS4, and because Hob G's was getting it. We pretty much beat the entire game together. I had an absolute blast playing it with him, but it was just more or less the same thing. Cuphead, fantastic game, very difficult. Wolfenstein, I, yeah, I haven't played it yet, so I really can't say much about that. But out of the two that I have played, I would probably have to give the best action game to Cuphead. Um, it's a shooter, platformer, adventurer, or adventure game, and... It's just fantastic. The visuals, and it does have good sound effects. It's just the music to me isn't like, you know, it's not, do, 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 do. you know, Mario, th you, you know that song. You hear it, you're just like Mario. You hear Ocarina of Time songs. You just know what it is. 
I don't think we'll ever get to the point where you hear a Cuphead song and you're just like, the Cuphead? Like, so no. I mean, yeah. But Cuphead's definitely the best action game for me. All right. Best action adventure game. Ooh, you added one more word to it there, uh, Jeff Keighley. All right, so you got Uncharted Lost Legacy, Assassin's Creed Origins, Zelda, Mario, Horizon. Um, that's a doozy. I mean, these are all good games. I'm not I'm not saying that Mario and Zelda are not good games. Just to reiterate that again. Uncharted, haven't played it yet. Um, waiting for that to be about 15 20 bucks. Assassin's Creed, again, that's on sale this Black Friday at GameStop for 25 or 30 bucks. Picking it up then. I do want it. Uh, anybody that doesn't know this about me, I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I have every single one of them on the PlayStation. I have all the ones that came out on the Wii U. Um, yeah, I, just, I love Assassin's Creed. I, I've played through all of them. Um, so I can't wait to play that. Uh, Zelda, meh. Mario, meh. And Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, originally in the year, if you followed the channel, or if you're a newer subscriber, you can go check it out. I got the gold PS4, unboxed it, and I got it with Horizon Zero Dawn. And in that video, I mentioned that this was my game of the year. Um, it's definitely a contender for it, and I'm going to have to go ahead and say that it earns the best action-adventure game in this category out of all those five titles. Best role-playing game. All right, so we got South Park Perfection Butthole. Haven't played it yet. Do want to get it? I'm gonna wait till it's like 20 bucks. Final Fantasy 15. Still haven't beat it yet. This came out at the tail end of last year, I believe, or maybe it was early this year. I can't remember. Um, Divinity Original Sin 2. I do have. Haven't beat it. Near Automata. Still haven't beat it, but it is a good ass game. Persona 5. Don't own it yet. Uh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give best role playing game to Near Automata. I think it's a fantastic franchise. Uh, the music, the graphics are amazing, and it's just an awesome game. And if you haven't played the first one, I would recommend playing the first one, then hopping into the second one. And honestly, in all reality, you should play Dragon Guard 3, then play Nier, then play Nier Automata, because that's how that actually works. Dragon Guard 3 splits into Dragon Guard 1 and 2, then Nier and Nier Automata. That's the story. Uh, and then there's like comics and movies and all, a whole bunch of other shit that goes in between them. But game-wise, that's how you should play it. Um, I cannot wait to finish playing that. I actually have not been watching Sam Retro play it. I watched him play up until the part that I had gotten to just because I don't want any spoilers. But go watch Sam Retro play it because he's awesome and the game's awesome if you don't have it. And you can get a feel for it if you like it. All right, best fighting game. Uh, f I just recently got into fighting games this year and I'm actually like really enjoying it. Uh, Tekken 7, cool game. I have it. I like it. Those are probably some of the better looking graphics, in my opinion, this year. I mean, that's a really good looking game. I mean, you got to figure you're only really doing a background layer and two characters, so how hard could it really be? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Nidhogg 2, I don't know what the fuck that is. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, um... I do have that as well. Picked it up. Haven't beat it yet. Uh, I do like it. It's got a it, it's got a pretty good story to it. I the, I was just very disappointed with the fact that it doesn't have X Men characters in it. Um, I just they should be in there. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Injustice Two. I won't be picking that up till Game of the Year edition. Just like Mortal Kombat and Injustice One. And Arms. Uh, again, it looks really badass. It's basically punch out but more of like an open arena level kind of thing from what i've seen it's, it's so it's like punch out but you're on a bigger level and not just like in a boxing ring um so i do want to get it but again i want to get it when it's cheap so for best fighting game out of all of these i'm gonna have to go with tekken 7 uh just because graphically it's probably the most superior one in my opinion um and you really can't mess up a franchise that's that old and they haven't They've just made it better and better every time. Um, I've only ever played four, five, and si well, four, five, six, and seven. I never played one, two, and three. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom to me is a close second, um, but they just didn't. I don't know. The X Men not being in there really just pisses me off. So you didn't win that one for me. Best family game. Here's something funny. Four out of five of these games are on Nintendo consoles. <laughs> All right. 
So you got Splatoon 2, Sonic Mania, Mario and Rabbit Kingdom. Yeah, Mario and Rabbit Kingdom Battle, sorry. Um, Mario Kart 8 and Super Mario Odyssey. I actually do own all these in this in this and I've beaten just about all of these. Uh so Splatoon 2, really cool game. I played the fuck out of the multiplayer on that. And um we'll get back to that in a second. Sonic Mania really harkens back to the original four games and I really love it. The music's good. This should I mean fuck, this should have been in the music category. Uh, it's just a really good game. It's a really good throwback, and if you don't have that yet, I can't recommend it enough. At its full price of twenty dollars, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I have heard rumors that, uh, and by rumor I mean I directly emailed somebody and asked them. Uh, one of these smaller, <clears throat> limited run, not specifically limited run, one of those companies that does the limited run of games, is making a physical version of this. For what system, they would not tell me, but it is coming. And I heard that straight from the cat's mouth because uh, I just I bug people on Twitter <laughs> and eventually they answer you. Uh, Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. This is kind of a sleeper hit and personally I think this should have been in the game of the year category as well but you can't put like a million games in there. If you own a Switch and you don't own this game, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Uh, Mario Kart 8. Uh, this was already on the Wii U. I played the fuck out of it there. Played the fuck out of it again on the Switch. Uh, I actually waited a month or two to buy this, but then eventually I just snapped, and I was just like, I, I, I need to have Mario Kart it on the go. And then Mario Odyssey, like I said, it's, I don't know, maybe I just haven't played it enough, but it, it is a good game, but I just, I don't know, I'm just not hooked to it like I was 64, Sunshine, and I didn't really like the Galaxy games either, to be honest. Um, maybe I'm just old and just set in my ways, but whatever. Um, so, best family game here. I'm probably going to, have to go with Splatoon 2, and I'll tell you why. Uh, my best friend has a seven-year-old and then a one-year-old. Obviously, the one-year-old doesn't play the game with us. However, I did sit her on my lap and gave her the Pro Controller one time, and she was trying to press the buttons, but she couldn't quite do it. And then, uh, so seven-year-old, that's my dude. Um, I kind of treat him like my he's my own son. I bought him a 360 last Christmas because he wanted a 360, so I bought him one. The year prior, I got him... I think I gave him a GameCube one year. I gave him a Genesis one year. Uh, I gave him a bunch of Wii games one year. So like I've been giving him game presents every year. Um, you got to train him while they're young because his dad doesn't buy him game stuff, but Uncle Alex does. And um, <clears throat> but yeah, he's super addicted to Splatoon. He loves it. Every time I come over, he'll like tug on my shirt and be like, "Did you bring Splatoon? Did you bring Splatoon? Did you bring Splatoon?" And it's just it's super comical, and I love. I love doing that, and it's just like I've, I don't have my own kids, so it's cool to to go enjoy his kids for like a couple hours and play Splatoon with him and just watch him light up in the face and just love, just he's addicted to it, and like it's just fun to play with him, and we'll he'll play around, and I'll play around, and his dad will play, and then just rotate it, and it's just super fun. It's it's a, it's a great family game, and it, even if you don't have a family, it's just good to play by yourself. Super fun, super addicting, great multiplayer game. All right, best strategy game. All right, so we got XCOM 2. I am a fan of the first game. Don't own the second one. I'm kind of waiting and hoping they'll make a compilation where, it, you know, it's either got two Blu-rays or it's all just shoved onto one Blu-ray. Uh, Tooth and Tail. I don't know what that is, but from this picture, I kind of want to get this game. Uh, <laughs> I might have to look into this here in the near future. Kind of reminds me of, like, I don't even, like some, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Total War, Warhammer. Uh, so here's something funny that most people don't talk about. Most people harp on Assassin's Creed coming out all the time. And, you know, um, Tony Hawk's back in the day used to come out every year. And Need for Speeds used to come out all the time. Nobody ever harps on Total War for coming out every fucking year. And I'm pretty sure sometimes they might even have two come out in one year. Um, how come nobody harps on them for that? I think they put out too many games. But that's just me. Halo Wars 2, whoo, I'm actually currently getting ready to replay that on the Xbox One X just to enjoy the better visuals. Really good game if you're a Halo fan. And then Mario and Rab Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So for this category, I'm going to have to go ahead and give it to, being that I only played two of these games, but I did love and beat both of them. I'm going to have to go ahead and probably, it's actually kind of a tricky, tricky for me to, to pick that. Um... <clears throat> Halo Wars 1 was definitely one of my favorite 360 games, but Halo Wars 2 just didn't 
just didn't grab me as much as the first one did. And the Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is such a new franchise that I really enjoyed and really hope to see more out of. So I'm going to have to go ahead and give that to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So that's for the best strategy game. And then uh, best sports slash racing game. You got Project Cars 2. The first game was Garbage. Pro Evolution Soccer 2018. Go play soccer in real life. NBA 2K18. Go play basketball in real life. Uh, GT Sport. Uh, don't own that yet. Again, I do want to get that so I can play it in VR. Uh, then you got Forza Horizon or Forza Motorsport 7. Awesome game. And FIFA 18. Go play soccer in real life. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and say that Project Cars shouldn't even be nominated in this category and that developer should be shut down. Uh, fuck you, Slightly Mad Studios. And let's get into why I'm saying that. They um, either did Indiegogo or Kickstarter or Patreon or whatever they did, and they promised a Wii U port of the original one. They kept promising it, promising it, promising it, and then it never came, and the Wii U's dead now, and it's still not on the Switch for the original game. And like Mostly Nintendo fans funded your project and gave you the money to have your studio that you have now. And you still haven't delivered. So, fuck you, Slightly Mad Studios. You don't even deserve to be in this category. Being that I only have one of these games, the vote clearly has to go for Forza 7. It's a fantastic game. The visuals are great. And the engine the engine notes are just sound on, spot on. And just everything about it is good. The, every iteration, it just gets slightly better. Um, I will have to say that Forza 4 is the best one on the 360, and now Forza 7 is the best one on this, and not, and obviously that makes kind of sense, but with 5 and 6, they took away a lot of content that was in Forza 4, and then now 7's finally back up to the level of Forza 4, so those are the best in the franchise, because um, 5 and 6 were just lacking a lot of cars, they really were. Alright, best multiplayer. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a tough one because I think I've actually played all of these games. Yes, I have. So this is another category that I can actually give some insight into. I just got into Fortnite about a month ago on the Xbox, and then with my PC buddy Chris, who is in the PUBG footage that I did in that episode the other day, um, we just got into it on the PC. We're liking it. It's a little bit of a learning curve for him to have building aspects in a shooting game. He's not in, he's not enjoying that part of it. Uh, then we've got Call of Duty, World War II. Um, I'm enjoying it. I was playing that the other night with the Xbox Club with uh, Jeff, uh, Tight White, um, Shad Juice, and uh, Paul, Power Player Paul was in there, but he wasn't playing with us. He was in the party chat, and then. Uh, Old Dog, I don't think he actually has a YouTube channel. I could be wrong. And, yeah, we were just having a blast playing it. It's, it's definitely a good, relaxing game to just sit down and play. Splatoon 2, to me, is more competitive than Call of Duty. You actually have to have skill to play Splatoon. You don't really have to have skill to play Call of Duty. You kind of just aim down the site and hope that you see the other person first. With Splatoon, you got to know how to ink and ink properly and use the roller. You like have to actually have skill and train with the weapons. Call of Duty, you just aim down the sight and you shoot. Like Splatoon, it looks like a kiddie game, but it's like you have to actually be good at games to be good at Splatoon. And I'm actually good at Splatoon. I'm not really good at Fortnite. I like it, though. Not really good at Call of Duty anymore. I guess that's because I'm getting old. Used to be okay at it. Splatoon 2, I am good at it because I've already sunk like 60 hours into it, if not more. Basically just on the multiplayer. Uh, Mario Kart 8, I've played the crap out of that. I played a lot of it online on the Wii U, but it's the same online, so I can still judge that. Uh, Destiny 2, for me, it was good. I And the only th the only reason I think it was good is because Hav is a funny guy, and that's why I enjoyed it, because like, me and him were just joking around the whole time, streaming, and I think that's why I enjoyed it a little more than I normally would have, because Destiny 1, I pretty much beat that by myself. Destiny 2, on the other hand, you can play by yourself, but it's just... It is more fun to play those games with people. But, yeah. And then PUBG, I've been playing the crap out of that. Um, uh, I'm actually going to open my Steam up here real quick and see how many hours I have on that, but we'll keep talking. Um, so for me, I'm probably going to have to say that... Uh, really, that's it? Huh. 
I really thought that there was more hours than that. Only 30 hours on PUBG, but that is just solid multiplayer, and sometimes those matches can last four minutes or even less if you die in the first five seconds. So I, I know I've played tons of matches on that, but so I have probably at least, let's say, anywhere from five hours all the way up to, I don't know, 60 hours on some of these games. Splatoon 2 is definitely 60 hours. But so for me, I'm going to have to go ahead and give this to Splatoon 2. This year, I played that pretty much every night after work, so Monday to Friday, by myself for two months. And then on Saturdays, I would go over to my friend's house and play it with his son and me. So basically, I played it six nights a week for about two months and just loved the crap out of it. And then I just kind of stopped playing it. Um, most anticipated game presented by Mick Shit. Uh, Oh, wait, I have some right here. I just go there to get the fresh Coke, which is not really any better than eating hamburgers from there. All right, so we got The Last of Us 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, Monster Hunter World, Spider-Man, and God of War. What's something that all these share in common? One PlayStation exclusive, two PlayStation exclusives, three PlayStation exclusives, and I'm pretty sure Monster Hunter World is coming out on the Xbox, but it was shown on the PlayStation stage. Red Dead Redemption 2 was shown by them first, but then I think it was shown during the PlayStation conference, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it is obviously coming out on everything. And don't be surprised if that actually comes out on the Switch. Clearly Rockstar's testing the waters with L.A. Noire right now. That's absolutely what they're doing. However, I will not be buying that game because I've already bought it twice for 360, PS3, actually, and the PC. So I own that three times already. I don't need to dip in four times. The PC version is the exact same version as these. Um, so Last of Us 2, Red Dead Redemption 2. So which is the most anticipated game for me out of all of these? Easy. Last of Us 2, baby. Um, the Last of Us 1 is in my top ten games of all time. It will probably quickly get replaced by The Last of Us 2 because they're just going to stack on and build on to that story like they already have. And I just can't wait for it. Um, it's my most anticipated game of this generation because I knew it was coming. Uh, before the generation even got announced, I was basically waiting for PS4 to come out just so that I could play that game. All right, best independent game. We got Pyre, Knights, Night in the Wood, Cuphead, what Remains of Edith Fitch and Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice? Oof, this is going to be a tough one because Cuphead and Hellblade are definitely really good games, and I think you owe it to yourself if you have an Xbox to buy Cuphead, and if you have a PlayStation, you need to buy Hellblade. Or if you have a PC, you can buy both. Um, I'm going to have to give it to Hellblade. Um, I like I just cannot state how good this game truly is. Cuphead is also really good, but while they spent a lot of time on the art development and drawing and this and that, I don't really know, and you can go watch some of the trailers and vid documentaries and interviews of Hellblade, but the amount of time and dedication that went into studying mental illness and the facial anima animations that they did and... Uh, the graphics, I mean, fuck, those are some of the best graphics this generation. Just, they really are. Like, I cannot explain to you, like, the graphics are the best. The the voice acting is fa fantastic. The motion capture, the face is just amazing. The audio is 3D. It's amazing. Everything about this game just blows it out of the park for me. Why this isn't a contestant for Game of the Year, I don't know. But, because they would probably be my Game of the Year, quite frankly. But, um... Yeah, best independent game, hands down, Cuphead, and a close second. Uh, best student game, jury pick. Okay, I don't really know what these are. I don't know what this means, but one of them is called Meaning, Level Squared, Implosion, Falling Sky, Hollowed, and From Light. I don't know literally what these are, so we're going to skip that one. Trending Gamer. This is pretty much an easy choice for me. I don't know who this guy is. Steven something. Don't know who you are. Mike something. Don't know who you are. Guy Behem. 
Dr. Disrespect. I play a lot of PUBG, so I think you know who might win this one. Uh, Clint and Andrea. Dr. Disrespect, hands down. I don't ever watch Twitch except for him. Uh, the dude's fucking hilarious, and he deserves all the subscribers and fans that he has because he actually puts some effort into being creative instead of just showing cleavage on Twitch, and uh, he's just a funny-ass dude. So, yeah, I would say he deserves that. More than likely, he will win that. All right, best esports game. Got Rocket League, League of Legends, Dota 2, Counter-Strike, and Overwatch. Can't some fresh games ever get put into here? Like, why is Splatoon 2 not in here? Why is Mario Kart 8 not in here? Why is Smash not in here? Like, those should be esports, not these garbage-ass games. But whatever. Uh, Rocket League is fun to play. I've played it. It's okay. League of Legends, not a fan. I've tried it. Dota 2, I've tried it. Not a fan. Counter-Strike, I used to play, play that a pretty good bit. And then Overwatch, just literally don't like that game. Uh, so out of all these, I'm going to have to go ahead, say, go ahead and say Counter-Strike just because it's the only game that I really actually enjoyed out of all five of these games. Best Esports Player, presented by Omen by HP. Okay, shout out, HP. Uh, Kuro, Jung Hong, Nicola, Marcelo, and Lee Sang Hyung Faker. I get, Oh, that's his gamer name or whatever. I don't know who any of these people are, so... We're just going to go with Ji Hong. <laughs> uh, best esports team. I don't know any of these teams. We got Team Liquid, SK, SK Telecom 1, Lunatic Ha, FaZe Clan, and Cloud9. Uh, team Liquid because Solid Snake. Liquid. Liquid! Liquid! Oh. Best debut in the game. Yeah. 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 Slime Rancher, Mr. Shifty, Hollow Knight. Golf Story and Cuphead. Uh, Hollow Knight did look cool. So does Mr. Shifty. And Golf Story looks okay. I'd pay five bucks for those, but that's about it. So needless to say, I do have Cuphead and paid full price for it because it deserves my full price. Um, this goes to Cuphead. <laughs> All right. Best Chinese game. I didn't know that that was a category. That's kind of a weird category, but whatever. Uh... Monument Valley 2, JX3HD, Gumball, Icy, and King of Glory. I don't really know what any of these are. However, JX3HD looks the coolest, so we're going to go with that one. Um, and I guess that's it. So those are kind of like my picks. Uh, I know this is a super long video, but hopefully you'll enjoy listening to me ramble on about Game of the Year stuff. Uh, I really do believe that Hellblade should have been put into here as a contestant for Game of the Year instead of just the typical games. I mean, I don't even understand why Persona 5's in here. I know a lot of people enjoyed it, but that's kind of more like a niche game. It's not like a big mainstream game. But and then again, I guess Hellblade clearly isn't either. But those are my opinions on all that stuff, guys. This is now 48 minutes long. Hopefully you watched that. If you did, let me know in the comment section below what some of your opinions are on all these games. And uh, as always, peace out for now. Till next time. Come here, you mother. I'm on it.